coming to you live from Studio F in Rushi, Ohio. It's the Fish Report Live Show with your hosts, Craig Fissinger and Ken Francis. Welcome, everyone, to another Fish Report Live. It is Wednesday night, May the 1st. My name is Craig Fissinger. That's Ken Francis. TK and Heavy D, like always, are back in our sound room. And, Ken, I took last week off. We had a special guest host in here. I hopefully didn't do too well. I don't want to lose my job, but uh, i got to ask you how things go. Well, you're not going to lose your job, Craig, but, uh, you know, Ryan Gutman did a great job with us last week. Uh, we appreciated him filling in for you. And uh, it's nice to know that uh, if you can't make it or I can't make it, uh, you know, Coach Gutman, I'm sure, will fill in or, or TK or Heavy D from the sound room. So we're, we're covered from all angles anyway. All right, good deal. Well, uh, we got a lot to talk about tonight. We're going to be talking some baseball. We're going to be talking some softball. It's kind of getting to that point of the season, Ken, where we start thinking about the tournament draw. Actually, the tournament draw is coming up this weekend for softball and baseball both. And we're going to be talking about that tonight a little bit with our interviews, aren't we? Yes, we are. It's going to be fun. We've got uh, Minster softball coach Scott Robinson on the phone with us tonight, as well as Anna head baseball coach Mike Muehlfeld. So we'll have to hear what they have to say about upcoming games, the upcoming tournament draw. And, uh, yeah, it's a fun time of the season. You know, teams are starting to uh, to settle in. You know, everybody's starting to figure out uh, who, to, who they want to play, who they don't want to play, or who they want to avoid, and so on. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, well, before we get to all that, we got to get to that weekly trivia question just like we do every week. And, and before we get to that, i got to say, I watched the show last week, and, and I thought your trivia question was really easy. Why don't you give me one like that? Well, you know, Craig, it was easy because you weren't on the show. You know, when you're on the show, there's a little more pressure on you, and, and therefore, uh, you know, they're not always so easy when you're uh, sitting up here on the stage. Yeah, you know, I kind of compare it to uh, watching like a game show like uh, Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy or something like that. When you're watching it on TV, you, you always get the answers right, and you're like, why ain't I on there? But then when you get on the show, it's a little harder. That's yeah, a little tougher. So tonight's question is, Craig, you know, we're going to be talking a little Anna baseball tonight, so the question is, uh, Anna currently has won two state championships, one in 1972 and one in 1980. The one in 1972, Craig, their head coach was a guy by the name of Tom Middleton. All right. Okay. Who was their head coach in 1980 when they Ooh. won the state championship? Okay. Was it A, Richard Ansley, B, Eddie Seger, C, Bob Anderson, or D, Sparky Anderson? Oh, Okay. Well, give me those choices again. All right. You got Coach Ansley. All right. Coach Seger, uh, Bob Anderson, or Sparky Anderson. Four good choices there, Ken, and uh, I guess I'll have to give that a little bit of thought and uh, give you my answer at the end of the show. All right. Well, if anybody can help him out, uh, feel free to uh, text him or tweet him or send him a social media link and uh, see if he can get it right. All right. Well, let's start things out tonight talking a little softball, Ken, and uh, let's bring up the SCL standings, see where we're at right now, and check out the big games coming up tomorrow night. Well, the softball standings are a little interesting, Craig. You've got three teams there with one loss, uh, Houston, Rushi, and Fort Lormie. Uh, Fort Lormie actually two games back of Houston, though, in the win column. So, you know, the way the league is shaping up this year, uh, a big surprise the other night, Anna knocked off Houston to give them their first league loss. So uh, anything can happen, and uh, some really good games coming up again uh, Thursday night. So we'll, uh, uh, the headliner there, I guess, would be Anna at Rushi and Fort Lormie at Houston. Yeah, there are some good games coming up. And, and obviously, we talk a lot about SCL softball on this show, Ken. Uh, we even talk some CCC softball because it is one of the better conferences in the state of Ohio. One conference we don't really touch on a lot probably is the MAC, and it's a very good softball conference. You know, Parkway's kind of been always the traditional power in that in that conference. Uh, uh, Versailles actually last year made a great run, and I believe they're actually leading the conference this year. And then you got Minster, who's really the last couple years come on. Uh, they had a, a great run last year going all the way, all the way to the regional finals. And and they're not really just one of the best teams in the MAC. They're one of the best teams in the area, aren't they? Yeah, they are. You know, and they're led by uh, the energetic coach Scott Robinson. You know, Scott's done a great job. He's been very involved with uh, summer programs. He's been very involved with uh, the high school program over there at Minster. And uh, you know, he's just done a super job. He, he made a nice tournament run with him last year, Craig. And fortunately, we're going to have him on the phone with us tonight to uh, discuss some softball. Yeah, one of the great players they had last year was uh, Hannah Floyd, who, as you know, now plays at Wright State. A uh, very good player, and I kind of thought well maybe that's the reason for all their success last year because of Hannah but uh, they kind of picked where that picked up where they left off last year and uh, we're going to talk to coach about that and I believe we have him here live on the phone right now uh, coach welcome to Fish Report Live and thanks for joining us tonight hey thanks for having me appreciate it 
All right, first, let, let's get right to it here. I, I know you're fighting for a MAC title again this year. You're just one game back of her sales, I believe. Uh, you finished runner-up last year, uh, just one game back. And, uh, oh, by the way, I just mentioned you guys also went to the regional finals last year. Uh, before last year, though, Minster really never finished that high in the league standings. I want to ask, are, are you happy with where the program's at here the last couple of years? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we uh, brought a program in. I've got some good assistance, and we knew what we wanted to do. The first year was a little rough, but we kind of put things in place. And, yeah, I'm real happy with the direction it's in right now. Okay, well, I want to ask you about one of your stars, and that's junior Kayla Richard. Uh, she seems to have kind of picked up where she left off last year. She's one of your top pitchers, she, or she is your top pitcher. She's also one of your top hitters. Uh, but I know you have a lot of girls in that team that are playing r- real well right now. Can you talk about a few of them? Yeah, it is good to have Kayla back. And, you know, she's only a junior, so I get her another year, too, and that's nice. Um, I do have a good group of kids. Uh, got Reagan Hahn, who's a sophomore that catches. She she really runs the game well for us. And everybody feels comfortable with her back there. But, you know, we got Marissa Conrad at shortstop, who's flipped over from third last year. Uh, and she's, she's really, really strong in the field. And then. Uh, my daughter at second helps a lot, and then we have a good good speed in the outfield with Sarah Ozzie and uh, Stephanie Albert just came along pretty nice this year. Coach Hyde, pretty, pretty good, pretty pretty good group there. Hi, Coach. This is Ken Francis. Uh, you mentioned your daughter Alexis Robinson. Uh, Craig and I have had the uh, opportunity to interview several coaches who have had the opportunity or been fortunate to coach their son or daughter at the high school level. Explain to our listeners out there how this is special for you. Well, it is definitely special to be able to coach your own child in sport. Um, it, it's a little tough sometimes because you have to know where to draw the line, but be fair across the board. But it, it is special. I mean, it's, it's something that you know you look back on hopefully in the future and say that it was definitely a big opportunity and knowing that you that you could spend that extra time with them doing something that you both love well you know i can understand that and that would you know there'd be nothing better than at uh you know like you said having uh the opportunity to coach your son or daughter and both doing something you really enjoy so yeah. thurs thursday night coach you've got a huge game with parkway uh parkway is currently tied with you guys for second place in the mac uh, they've been very successful in the MAC the last few years. They've won three of the last four MAC titles. Uh, what is it that makes this Parkway team so tough to prepare for? Well, number one, they've got a pretty good coach, and whenever you're well coached, you're you're going to be solid. Uh, and, you know, number two, they had a great pitcher in Emily Crow, and then when they lost her, Sierra Fent kind of stepped right in. And, you know, Fent Fent throws 65 miles per hour right now, which is pretty tough to hit at the high school level um so and i know sierra pretty well she actually plays for me in the summer and she's a great kid with a great family and she's a hard worker and you know i know she's capable of not that she has to but that she's capable of taking a team and carrying them and i think she's kind of done that the last couple of years well, this weekend is a is an exciting weekend for all baseball and softball fans. It's tournament draw weekend. Last yeah. year, uh, you were in the Walpock District. Parkway was in the Elida District. Um, what, what are your thoughts this year going into the tournament draw, and who are some of the big teams that uh, you want to make yourself aware of? Well, obviously in the sectional, the way it works out is we end up playing a lot of the MAC teams again, and that that's a little tough because, you know, the MAC is getting stronger every year in softball, and whenever you're familiar with somebody, that's always a tough game. So that section will be tough. And then when you, if we do get out to the district, you have Lima Perry, who you know we uh, had to play last year, and the, they're a tough team. They're well coached. We got a great pitcher. And then you know, there's always other teams there that at that level are capable of winning at any time. So, but I expect Lima Perry to be you know pretty tough out of that upper side. Bracket and any anytime like I said anytime you got to play a familiar foe, <laughs> you got to always bring your A game. So, all right, coach. Hey, listen, one more question and we'll let you go. Uh, now, a couple weekends ago, you guys had a, a special ceremony over there at Minster. Uh, I believe the school retired the jersey of one of your former players, Hannah Floyd, who now plays uh, for Wright State University. Uh, explain it to to the listeners out there what Hannah has meant to the uh, to the Minster program. Oh, uh, Hannah's. Anna really was a pioneer. I mean, she, 
you know, when we brought our program in, she bought in right away, and she was kind of our, uh, I guess, go-to to make that happen at, at the teenage level there with the, with the other ladies. And that, you know, her buying in like that and leading by example, and the hard work that she put in to become what she was and and, and the example of hard work to all the other girls was just it's priceless. You know, to have somebody like that makes it so much easier to implement a, a system. She's a great small player, uh, which I had her back for another year. <laughs> and she's certainly yeah. having a lot of success at Wright State, it sounds like as well. Yeah. All right, listen, great stuff, Coach. We're, we're going to let you go. Hey, listen, good luck tomorrow night against Parkway. Good luck the rest of the season, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight at Fish Report Live. Hey, thanks. I appreciate you guys having me on, and thanks for the well wishes. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you. All right, that was the head coach of the Minster softball team, uh, Ken Scott Robinson. I actually asked somebody, uh, a, a local softball fan here, if uh, Coach Robinson had coached elsewhere before Minster. Uh, they thought Minster was his first job, and that, uh, but that he has been very active in coaching some of the summer, and a, a summer league around the last couple of years. Right, like he said, you know, he coaches. Uh, I'm sure it's like an AAU type softball team. Uh, he coaches the girl from Parkway, like he said, uh, who brings it 65 miles an hour. That's Craig. fast. That's, that's bringing it from what 50 feet, 45 feet. I don't yeah. even know what they pitch from, but uh, it's not very far. So that that's bringing it pretty good. And, uh, you know, he had the honor of coaching uh, one of Rushi's great uh, alumni now, uh, Caitlin Heron. So, um, you know, he's very familiar with uh, a lot of the good players around the area, which probably helps him out a lot at the high school level uh, because he gets to know these kids and, and some of their characteristics of them uh, during the summer. So uh, appreciate him taking time to talk to us tonight, Craig, and he did a great job. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we're gonna, we're, that's going to do it for our softball talk. We're going to take a short break. Ken, when we come back, though, we're going to talk some baseball, including that big interview with Anna's head coach, Mike Muehlfeld. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live, everyone. Uh, Ken, before the break, we were talking some softball. We're going to get into a little baseball now. But speaking of baseball, you asked me a trivia question at the beginning of the show. Uh, uh, give me those answers again. All right, Anna has two state championships. Okay. One was in 1972. The other was in 1980. Okay. All right. 1972, the Rockets were coached by Mr. Tom Middleton. All right. 1980, who coached the Anna Rocket baseball team? Was it Coach Richard Ansley? Eddie Sager, Bob Anderson, or Sparky, or Sparky Anderson. Anderson. Okay. It's Sparky, Sparky Anderson, any relation to Bob Anderson? Uh, that I don't know. He could be. Any relation to Dick Ansley or Eddie Sager? <laughs> he's, he's no relation to Dick Ansley, but Dick Ansley is the father-in-law of Rushi alum, um, Dave, Dave Voizard. That's correct. That's so maybe if Dave Voizard's helping you out, maybe or watching, maybe he could help you out. I, I need, don't know. Maybe need, Nish is watching. I don't know. I need to get Dave on the phone and ask him the answer. Yeah, maybe Dave would probably know. 
Okay. You would know if it is or if it isn't, that's yep. for sure. Okay. All right, well, let's get into our baseball talk, Ken, and let's get right to those SCL league standings, see where we're at and what big games we have coming up tomorrow night. Well, the standings are kind of interesting this year, Craig. Fort Laramie's is top of the league standings at 7-0. and Rushi far and away with the best overall record in the league at 15-4. and So, uh, you know, Lormy knocked Rushi off the one time they met this year in, in a game at Fort Laramie. Uh, those two will have a rematch come this coming Monday night. And uh, which is which is bound to be a great game. But uh, before that, you know, both teams got business to take care of. Uh, Rushi has a big game tomorrow night with Anna and uh, Fort Laramie travels to Houston. So uh, the league standings, you know, looks like a two team race, Craig. And, and uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of baseball to be played yet. All right, let's talk about those Raiders a little bit since they are the home team. They have been playing really well lately. I know they split a doubleheader this past Saturday with state-ranked St. Henry. Uh, they threw a no-hitter the other night at Jackson Center. Playing really well, aren't they? Yes, they are. They've been getting great pitching all season, Craig. Uh, their defense has been outstanding, and they're starting to swing the bats with a lot more confidence, Craig. And, and you know, you put all that together, uh, you're talking about a team here that uh, on average is only given up, you know, uh, probably less than two runs a game. Uh, for the majority of those games. So uh, playing very well. Like I said, their pitching's been good. Their defense has been outstanding. And, uh, you know, they're, they're a tough team to beat. But in baseball, anything can happen, Craig. And, uh, you know, we're going to – big game for them tomorrow night. Yeah, and the, the Anna Rockets, they're a team that they, – they don't look all that impressive in the league standings right now. They kind of remind me of the basketball team, though. Kind of, uh, you know, a record that's not real hot. But they're one of those teams you really don't want to play right now. Right. You know, Anna's got a lot of good athletes, Craig. And when you got a lot of good athletes, eventually – they're going to gel together and they're going to start winning some big games. Same thing happened in basketball and it's starting to happen in baseball for him. So Coach Millfield's got them uh, playing very well right now. And, uh, you know, we'll see what they got tomorrow night. Yeah, they've, they've been playing really well lately. I know this past Saturday they went over to Versailles, a very good Versailles team, as you and I both know. Uh, they, they actually had a no-hitter. Anna was throwing a no-hitter going into the bottom of the seventh. Uh, ended up giving up one hit and getting beaten that game. It was a close one, I believe, maybe three to two. Uh, Monday night, they shut out the Houston 10 to nothing. And then uh, last night, they took a team at Riverside, a uh, team that's got some votes in the state right now, Kent, and ended up beating them in uh, 10 innings, I believe. Close game there. Uh, their, their ace, Josh Robinson, had 10 strikeouts, so a, a big, big uh, win for them. Like I said, they're hot right now. And we're happy to have the uh, the head coach of the Anna Rockets on the phone right now, Mike Mulefeld. Coach, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, thanks for having me. Real glad, uh, real glad to be here tonight. All right. Well, we just mentioned you're you're in the middle of the the, the pack in the SCL this season. Uh, uh, you know, it, you, records can be deceiving, though. For example, we just said you played a really good Versailles team on Saturday. It took a loss there, but you had a no hitter going in the bottom of the seventh inning. I, I want to ask you. You know, what 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 kind of lessons can you learn from a game like that? Well, I first off, you have to. I think a lesson that can be learned is you can compete with anybody. Uh, you know, on any given day, uh, when you're in an athletic competition, uh, you, you know, you got a chance to win, and uh, you have to show up and compete. And uh, I think we also learned that we have to finish the game because uh, you have to play the whole seven innings because uh, we had them two to nothing, had a big air that let them tie it up, came right back and answered the bell and took a 3-2 lead going into the seventh and uh, going into the bottom of the sixth and uh, had another air. On, on a relatively routine play and, and gave up another unearned run. And, and then we came away with nothing in the top of the seventh, and then they did the job and got a run to win it in the, in the bottom of the seventh. But, you know, you, you got to show up and you got to compete every day. If you do, uh, you've got a chance to, to win and, and even uh, beat teams that maybe on paper are better than you. But, but you have to finish those games and you have to, have to believe you can win them. And, and I told the kids after that loss that, you know, I think we played very well, but there's a couple instances where we just didn't make routine plays and we gave them more than three outs in an inning, and you can't do that in, in any level of baseball. And I, I really questioned whether we thought we were supposed to win. I, I just I told the kids, I said, I think you wondered if you were supposed to beat for sales. And, and, and I think that had a lot to do with why we didn't finish the game. We have been playing really well th this week so far, beating house and like I said, ten nothing. Beat a good Riverside team last night. I want to talk to you though about one of your really good hitters, uh, both last year and this year, and that center fielder Dustin Puppelman. Uh, we saw he was leading the, the team with around at maybe a three fifty batting average right now. Uh, in your opinion, it, why is Dustin so effective at the plate? Well, uh, I think I, number one, uh, he likes Pete. 
Um, I think he's a kid who looks forward and not backwards. Uh, baseball can be a game of failure. You know, you can be a pretty good hitter in baseball, 300 hitter, and that means you're failing 70% of the time. And, and uh, Dustin, I think, doesn't uh, carry over maybe a poor plate appearance or a poor bat earlier in the game or maybe a bad game previously into his next game or into his next at bat. So I, I think he, you know, I, I think he's always looking forward and, I think he's also the type of kid that can get on base in a lot of a lot of different ways. He's got decent speed, uh, so he can put the ball on the ground and use his legs. Uh, he's got a little pop in his bat. You know, he's got a he leads us probably with about eight doubles, and uh, he's he's one of the best bunners I've ever had. I've coached varsity baseball for over 15 years, and and uh, he's just a very good bunner. Uh, we've worked with him over the last couple of years on a push bunt and things like that, and and uh, you know it just seems like he can always make good good contact, put the ball where he wants, and, and uh, get it down on the ground. And I, I think it's a combination of those things, the confidence and not letting a, a previous bad at bat or bad approach uh, affect his next at bat, and then he can get on base a lot of different ways. Coach, hi, this is Ken Francis, and I appreciate you taking time to get on our show with us tonight. Another one of your key players is pitcher Josh Robinson. Uh, Josh has been leading the uh, league in strikeouts this year. He, he's been a very uh, dependable starting pitcher for you. Uh, what is it that uh, makes Josh so successful? Well, Josh is a, Josh is a, a, a real good young kid. Uh, he's a junior. Uh, he threw a lot for us last year as a sophomore, and, and really came out of nowhere to after we had some injuries at the varsity level to really you know kind of solidify our staff last year as a, as a 10th grader. Uh, looking for big things out of him this year, and he, he hasn't disappointed. Uh, he, he's just got real good, solid mechanics, and, and he commands the strike zone. And uh, I think he's, he's got good mechanics, and, and the key is I think he's, he's consistent with them. And, you know, if you want to consistently be around the plate and command the strike zone, you've got to be consistent with your mechanics, and, and he's done that. And uh, uh, he, he's not afraid to challenge people. Uh, you know, he's a year older and a year stronger and maybe got a little bit more giddy up and just a little bit smarter pitcher that, you know, the strikeouts are really starting to mount this year for him. But, you know, we kind of teach our philosophy is we want people pitching to contact. We we uh, don't expect them to strike them out. If you've got a little God-given ability to make the bat miss the ball, you're going to get your strikeouts. But we want you to command the strike zone and, and keep our defense in the game and, and give us a chance to help you with a lot of ground ball strikes and, and he does that. He, uh, you know, he's not only able to get the knockout punch with his stuff in the strike zone uh, in given situations, but he lets his defense help him, and, and he keeps the ball on the ground a lot. And I think that's why he's successful. Coach, you've got a big game tomorrow night. You'll be traveling over here to take on our Rushi Raiders. Uh, the bad thing about the Shelby County League is you have to play everybody twice. The good thing about the Shelby County League is you get to play everybody twice. What do you have to do well – in your game tomorrow night at Rushi? Well, we have to compete. Uh, when we played them the first time, it was 11 to nothing, I believe, and I really don't know for sure. can't remember the final score because it's a bad memory, and I don't want to remember it. But we just didn't show up to compete that night. Uh, they came out. Rushi's probably the best hitting team across the board we've seen all spring, uh, and that includes Minster and Versailles and, and people like that. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, they came out and really put the ball in play, hit the ball all over, and and uh, competed out of the gate. And I didn't think our kids handled that very well. We got down early. Uh, we had Josh on the mound, and, you know, uh, he's our leader. Kids look to him on the mound. And I think when things went bad the first couple of innings, we kind of felt sorry for ourselves, and then it just kind of snowballed from, from there. So, you know, we talked about you got to show up to compete. And, and uh, we're, we're, we've got some experience back, but we're still a relatively young team, and, and I think we were going through a stretch there where we weren't playing the best, and, and it was easy for us to feel sorry for ourselves, and, and we just didn't put up a very good showing against them. So, you know, I kind of challenged the kids tonight in practice that, you know, we, we need to show up and compete. And, and when Anna and Rushi and the teams like that and Warmy get together, it's, it's, a, it's a good game and it's, a, it's, a, it's good competition. So uh, I'm expecting that out of our kids tomorrow night. All right, Coach. Hey, listen, one more question and we'll let you go. Uh, you've been around high school sports and high school athletes for, for quite a few years now. I think you mentioned 15 years as a baseball coach. I want to ask you, what do you enjoy so much about your job as coach? And I know you're at the athletic director of there as well. What do, you, what do you enjoy so much about that? 
Well, I, I love sports. I love athletics, and uh, I love to teach, and uh, I'm competitive. Always have been competitive and played a lot of sports. So, you know, as, as a coach, a high school coach, varsity coach for much of the 30 uh, years that I've, uh, 34 years that I've taught uh, in one way or another, varsity basketball, varsity golf, varsity baseball, uh, it's given me an opportunity to do that. My wife teases me and says, you don't really work. You you have a hobby that you get paid for. And, and then I tell her, well, shame on me. You know, I'm pretty lucky to have that. And, and uh, you know, the 34 years that I've been a, a coach, uh, 26 of those years I've been athletic director, and, and that gives me an opportunity to, to maybe learn some of the things that, that I've learned over the years from good mentors and things of that nature and, and maybe pass those along to, to some young coaches and, uh, and hopefully help them have a, have a successful career. So, you know, it, it gives me a chance to be around sports, which I love, and I, I enjoy kids. You know, um, kids are they, – they keep you young, I feel. I'm one of eight children myself. I was the youngest of the family, and – and my parents always said raising eight kids kept them young. And, and I, I just feel that a career in education and being around kids and coaching and teaching them has, has enabled me maybe to stay a little younger. All right, well, that's great stuff, Coach. Hey, we really enjoy talking to you tonight. Uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow night in Rushi. And uh, thanks for joining us tonight on Fish Report Live. Thanks for having me. Appreciate thanks, Coach. It. All right, Cam, well, that is the head coach of the Anna Rockets, Mike Mulefeld. Boy, I could listen to that guy talk all night. He's oh, he's great. Yeah, he is. Uh, he knows a lot about sports. Uh, he's a great guy to talk to. I've talked to him a lot uh, just off of the side, Craig. He's, he's a lot of fun, and uh, he's a character. So he's, he, he, he loves his kids, he loves the sports, and, he, and he's a great guy to talk to. At, at 34 years, he said, he's been around coaching? That's Basketball, said, golf, yeah. baseball? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, he wasn't one of your choices for the trivia answer tonight, so I'm, I'm going to get right to that. I, I want to go to that trivia question again. Right. I think I got the answer. One more time, and give me my answer. I'll bet you Coach Milfeld knows this answer. Yeah, so sure the does. question is, who coached the 1980 state championship baseball team at Anna? Was it Coach Dick Ansley, Coach Eddie Seger, Coach Bob Anderson, or Coach Sparky Anderson? Fish, we got a tweet in. Uh, somebody put Dave Collins. Dave Collins. Yeah, he wasn't one of the choices. Ooh. I'm not going to pick him. So, but anyway, that'd been a good choice. That would have been. But I will say though, I was uh, during one of the basketball games this winter. I was standing in the hallway, staring at all the uh, state champion pictures up there, looking at Dean Stewart's uh, cross country teams, and and uh, I did see a picture of Dick Ansley with the baseball team up there. And, and I'm going to go with that one. I, I'm going to I'm going to say he he was the the coach in 1980. You know, Craig, if you had asked me this question, I would have said C. Bob Anderson. You know. Yeah. But you're right. It's Coach right. Dick Ansley, the so 1980 head coach of the Anna Rockets. All right, good Bob stuff. Bob Anderson did coach a team that went to state, Craig, in 1968. They got runner-up that year. Okay, well, good stuff there, Ken. All right, and before we end the show tonight, I think we're going to go back to the sound room, talk to those guys a little bit, see if they have any breaking news in the wide world of sports. Guys? Yeah, Craig, thanks. We do have a little bit. It's uh, not NFL draft, but it is football news uh, over in the MAC. Uh, St. Henry, as we know, lost their coach. Um, uh, he uh, left them about a month or so ago, and they just picked up Brad Luthman, who was an assistant over at Marion Local. So he will now be the Redskins coach at St. Henry. Um, he graduated from Versailles in 06 and uh, then went on to the University of Toledo. So uh, some good football stuff there, and we'll see what he can do. He's got uh, big shoes to fill with a couple of state championships over there at St. Henry, but uh, wish him luck, and I assume he'll do just as well as everybody else has. Let, so let me get this right. So he's a Versailles grad. Yep. He was at Marion Local, and now he's going to St. Henry. Did yeah. those Mac people let you do that over there? That's... I don't know, but at least he knows his uh, opponents now, so True. he's got that True. one for him. All right. Heavy D, anything from you? Yeah, I had uh, while we're on football, I had a chance uh, in our in our. Uh, By the way, I like the, I like the, the the new look back there tonight. I don't know if it's real extremely bright <laughs> back there, but I do like the new look. We are welcoming spring in <laughs> all around. I had a chance to uh, get a football update uh, in the in the intro. We have Adam Berkey throwing a couple passes, and we had him on last fall. Uh, Adam's. Uh, two-time state defending quarterback from Maria Stein uh, Jr. I spoke to his dad today, and uh, Adam's doing a little workout today some, for some uh, college coaches. Um, Adam's already got uh, a full-ride offer to Toledo uh, University. Um, so today he's, he's uh, going up uh, at a camp, uh, a couple more coaches checking him out, and a couple big-name schools in there. 
and a best of luck to Adam today. Uh, he's, he's got his whole career ahead of him, a big future ahead of him, and uh, all-around good kid. And I look forward to uh, seeing what he, what he signs with and uh, commits with here in the future. Should be good stuff. All right, guys, that is breaking news. That's good stuff back there. Ken, yeah, it is. Ken, what do you think? We should should we get some uh, shades like uh, Heavy D's like got it. back I there? I like Heavy D's look. Yeah, I like Maybe that. Maybe wear yeah. those for a show in the future. Yeah, we might have to do that. All right. Well, all right. Well, that's uh, that's going to do it for us tonight, folks. I want to say special thanks to uh, Coach Mulefeld and Coach Robinson for coming on the show live tonight. I believe you're going to be out. Uh, you're not going to be on the show next week. Are that's you? correct. I'll be out of town next week. So you know, I, if you guys have a show, great. Uh, I'm sure somebody else can fill in for me. We'll have to try to track down another special guest host for next week. So, all right, well, that's going to do it for us. Like I said tonight, uh, thanks again to everyone for watching. We'll be back again hopefully next week, same time, same place. Until then, have a great rest of the week, and good night, everyone. From Studio F in Rushi, Ohio, for Ken Francis, Craig Kissinger, and TK, this is Heavy D signing off saying good night and good fishing.